the Tidewater Wood and Boat Workshop as our speaker this morning. Tom served 29 years as a U.S. Marine Corps infantry, infantry officer. After retiring from the military in 2008, he worked as a defense analyst, director of operations for a defense and consulting firm. Spent the past four summers completing the wooden boat building course coursework at the Wooden Boat School in Brooklyn, Maine. And in February 2014, he founded Tidewater Wooden Boat Workshop. He left the defense industry in September of 2014 and now concentrates his full time and energy toward directing the nonprofit. Please give a warm, wet, rotary welcome to Tom Brent. I'm going to go right to the next slide and show a photograph there, and I'm going to get out of your way here. Uh, thank you very much for having me here today. I, I always enjoy talking about what really has become a, a passion for me. And doing this has helped me to combine three things that in my life have always kind of been a passion. One is woodworking, the other is uh, boats, and but probably uh, paramount is helping kids. And I've combined those three in this endeavor. Now, I'm often asked, well, how did you get into this? So I put this photo up here. That is not Tidewater Wooden Boat Workshop. <laughs> That is the Wooden Boat School in Brooklyn, Maine. Not Brooklyn, New York, but Brooklyn, Maine. And when I retired from the Marine Corps, the, uh, the officers that I worked with, I don't know who it was, maybe it was Barry Kimbrough, because we worked together at Joint Forces Command, got the idea that they needed to give me a gift certificate as a retirement gift, and they all chipped in and got me the gift certificate to go to the Wooden Boat School in Maine. Now, I didn't use the thing for two years, found out in 2010 that it had expired when I found it lying in a drawer, <laughs> laying in a drawer. <laughs> so I called the school and they said, nah, don't worry about it, pen change the date, come on up. And I did that summer. And it was a life-changing experience for me. A tremendously so life-changing experience. Getting to work with other folks, I'm not in this photo, that's a more recent photo, but that's the shop that it all came together for me up at the, uh, the Wooden Boat School. I went back, I took a two week course called Fundamentals of Boat Building, which is what that course is right there. And uh, went back the following summer, I loved it so much, and I took Advanced Fundamentals of Boat Building, another two week course. And it was around that time that I heard about these different youth boat building programs across the United States. There are over 60 youth boat building programs in the US. And I thought, man, it'll be pretty cool to use these new learned skills of boat building, go back to Tidewater and volunteer at a nonprofit that does youth boat building. So I came back and I searched and I searched and I searched and I found out that there was no youth boat building program. And I thought, how can this be? We're surrounded by water, the largest Navy base in the world, the, one of the largest ports on the East Coast, um, a big maritime tradition, but there wasn't it. So I, I, I approached a few other nonprofits and uh, tried to see. They sort of had missions, kind of like what I was looking at doing, and, but they weren't interested. So as, as Dick said in, in, in my intro, in, in February of 2014, I incorporated Tidewater Wooden Boat Workshop. Um, and, and then uh, about three months later, which surprised me because I was told don't expect it to come back in anything less than six years to 18 months. I got my 501c3 nonprofit status. I got it in two months. I applied in April. Well, came, the money in your day. It came in, in exactly. They, you know, the IRS has to get their, their blood money from me. But I looked around before I did that. I actually did go around and I visited some other nonprofits that do this. And I went to something a thing called Rocking the Boat in Brooklyn, New York. That is their workshop. And, and uh, the director of that has become a, 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 a good mentor for me, as well as uh, up in uh, Alexandria, uh, the Alexandria Seaport Foundation. They've also helped, helped get me going in terms of giving me advice. Uh, and, and, you know, I've, I've really tried to, this is my vision. What, what Rocking the Boat has in the Bronx is kind of my vision of where I want to see my organization go. We're still in the fledgling stages. Um, we just completed our first youth boat building program this summer. But, I mean, this is a tremendous operation here. Maybe someday in the future, 
where I'm aiming to take ours to do all of this. You can see all the kids building boats. And this is the worst, one of the worst places to grow up as a, as a kid. Uh, the, the Hunts Point area of the Bronx. Um, just, just vast poverty and everything else. And Adam Green is the director. He's doing great work there. So it, that's kind of my, it, that represents my vision where I'd like to see my organization go here. A little bit about us. As I already said, I incorporated in February and got my 501c3 after that. We're a member of what's called the Teaching with Small Boats Alliance, which is the, a, a national consortium of all these youth boat building programs that I talked about. Um, we were very fortunate, um, and, and I always say to my wife, I think the good Lord wants me to succeed at this endeavor. I happened to go to an oyster roast for CHKD in October of last year, and we got in line for our oysters, and I started chatting with this couple in front of us, my wife and I did, and he asked me what I was doing, and I told him about I'm starting this nonprofit, trying to get it off the ground. And he said to me, you need to come see me next week. And I said, well, who are you and what do you do? And he said, I'm the assistant director of parks and recreation for the city of Norfolk. So I went and briefed him two days later. He had me come into the office. He introduced me to the head of parks and rec. And you know, fast forward, they got us a place to set up our workshop, cost free, at the Norfolk Redevelopment and Housing Authority Facilities Management Division on Valentine Boulevard. And we moved into our new workshop on June 18th uh, of, of this year. Working with NRHA, who provided the kids, transported the kids from their house, picked them up, brought them to our workshop at 910 Ballantyne. At the end of the two hour session, the van shows up and boom, takes the kids back to their homes. And that went on all summer long. So we started on July 7th and we just had our, our launching ceremony uh, two days ago. But it's been a wonderful endeavor. So, you know, I, I said to my wife, what if we had gotten to the oyster roast 10 minutes later or five minutes earlier? I never would have met Wayne Green from the Norfolk Parks and Rec, and this probably never would have happened. I would have maybe could have still been searching for a place to, to set up our workshop. So we also, as part of this agreement, we have a place on the water at what's called the Grandy Village Learning Center on the Elizabeth River. There's boat storage, there's a launch point, and that's where we held our, our inaugural launching ceremony the other day. And that's part of our, our agreement to get that, and we're looking at getting a long-term lease for that. Everybody has to have a mission statement, and that's basically what we do. We want to we teach kids math, science, and life skills uh, using the building of wooden boats and other nautical-related activities. What are those? And I'll get into that in just a minute. But our focus is on uh, disadvantaged youth, <clears throat> ages 12 to 18. Um, and basically, now, is it just disadvantaged youth? We'll basically take any young man or woman who wants to or has a desire to learn the, the craftsmanship of, of building wooden boats and want to improve their life skills. Um, <coughs> See if there's anything else there. I'll move on because I know the time and I want to leave time for questions. What are our current programs? And these are photographs from our current our current uh, program. Other than the lower right hand corner, that's me in a boat I built at the Wooden Boat School my first summer in Maine. But uh, obviously, <coughs> boat building, uh, building wooden boats. We're, we're building something called the Bevins Skiff. It's a 12 foot rowboat. It can also be a sailboat. Uh, the, the four boats we built this summer with the kids uh, was just a rowing version. Um, the, uh, it, it was designed by Joe Ucha at the Alexandria Seaport Foundation specifically to teach math while building that boat. He, he, he's done something amazing. He has mapped the building of that boat to all the common core standards for math from sixth grade through high school. So he can tell you that if you build this boat and follow his curriculum, which we, we kind of sort of do, you'll cover 65% of 8th grade math requirements for Common Core standards, 85% for 6th graders, and so on and so forth. So he's, he's really got it down to a pretty good science. Um, we've also, once the kids built the boat, 
we take them out on the Elizabeth River and we teach them to row. One of our volunteers is a is a, uh, a really good rower. He taught rowing on the Jersey Shore, surf boat rowing. So he, he, he's pretty good at, uh, at, at rowing. And he did a great job for us at, uh, this past week. Uh, let me go to the next slide. Essentially, here's what our program does. The kids go from that, not even that really. I mean, that's a kit if you purchased a kit from Alexandria Seaport Foundation. We did it all from scratch, basic pieces of wood. But kids go from that, and this, this at least this summer, seven <coughs> weeks later, they had that boat that you see up there and a photograph on the upper left. That photo on the bottom right is not our kids. That's, a, that's just a, a thing from the Bevan Skiff. But that's, that's the Bevan Skiff, 12 foot, a 12 foot long boat. Uh, and you can see the specifications of it, but a pretty little boat. And as I said, it can also be designed, uh, built to be a sailboat also. But the kids this summer were just thrilled. And uh, we did the launching ceremony two nights ago and the parents that came uh, were, were absolutely thrilled to see these boats that their kids had, had, uh, had built. Um, they, were, they were so grateful for having their child. And as you might guess, 100% um, of them, because they were, they were recruited out of the, the NRHA uh, Section 8 housing, the housing for the poor in Norfolk, they were all African American. And I didn't ask, maybe I was afraid to, but it didn't matter, but I don't think very many of them knew how to swim. And getting them on the water, for some of them, rowing a boat, I think was a life-changing experience. <laughs> and even some of the things that they did in the workshop. We had one boy show up and he, he absolutely did not want to get anywhere near the bandsaw. And we took him over and I said, come on over. You know, and I had my hand on the, on the piece of wood just as he was cutting. And you'll see him in the, in the, the short video I'll show later that, with the photo of him on the bandsaw by himself, and then he, after a while he had all the confidence. Uh, I will say this also, I just thought as half of the participants in our program were female. And, and I, I got to tell you, probably the three best boat builders, two of the three best boat builders I had this summer were female, and, and, and they seemed to be able to focus a little better than boys at that age, I think is what it is. You always hear about, about young number of girls, you know, 12, 13, they can focus more than boys, and that, I tell you what, I got that proven to me in spades this summer with some of these, these young men, a little rambunctious, but it was they were all good kids and, and we had a good time. <clears throat> these are all the benefits that we see kids getting out of building boats. It's not just about math and science. Um, I, I don't know if, if, if some of you might have read this in the in the recent newspaper, but the uh, the ship repair industry which is one of the major drivers in this area of economics. They're predicting by the end of this decade, they're going to have an 18,000 worker shortage in the ship repair industry. And so we're talking to, to the head of the Ship Repair Association, Virginia Ship Repair Association, because we think we can encourage young men, and their focus is on getting kids in middle school interested in that kind of stuff. Now we, you know, we, we there's no market for wooden boat builders in this area. You know, you got to go to Maine if, if you want to do that. As Larry, we're, Larry's that's God's country for me. I love Maine, but um, but we do teach all these other skills that you know the intangibles, as I like to call them, the critical thinking, the problem solving, teamwork, and all the other things that you see up here uh, that that are what they call 21st century job skills. And, and uh, I think the kids get that. Let me see what else I had. And then these are the math skills that they have to use. That young lady there, she was one of our, Amani is her name, she was one of our better, better boat builders uh, this past summer. We had a total of, of 20 kids start the program. And it's summertime, so some went on vacation or they went to visit relatives someplace else. So. You know, we consistently had each week about 14 kids coming in. Some would come and go, and, but we had 20 that started and, and, uh, uh, and participated throughout the summer to build four boats. We built four of the boats, and you'll, you'll see them here. And I think, oh, on, on the horizon, what we're looking at in the future is uh, a sailing program, and we are teaming with Sail Nauticus, 
uh, to do a boat building program with their sailing students uh, this winter. In the winter time, they can't sail. What they've been doing with the kids is teaching them swimming. Now, these are eighth graders that have had two years of the swimming, so the, the head of that program said, hey, Tom, can they come and build boats with you this winter? So that's what we'll be doing. But with that, we'll also get into a sailing kind of uh, some sort of arrangement with them is what I envision. We want to get into environmental projects. We have links into the Elizabeth River uh, project and Lynn Haven River now, where we want to uh, get the kids interested in how do you help clean up the Lynn Haven River, or how do you help clean up the Elizabeth River. And then we want to do an adult boat building program to help raise money. You know, I'll show you. If anybody wants to learn how to build wooden boats, we can teach them, and we'll do a project. And, and I've, I've been approached by, uh, by a good number of, of adults that said, hey, I want to do, when I tell them what I'm doing, they say, for kids, how do I do that? And, and I said, well, we'll get there, but it's going to cost you. Uh, <laughs> you got to have a basement. And then a community rowing program. We hope to, to work, run that out of the, uh, the Grandview Village Learning Center. There's an office there and both storage that we're going to use. So, that's, that's really what we're looking at on the horizon. Right now, the building and the, and the rowing, but the future, we're, we're moving towards that. And then the last thing, and Barry, Barry knows that boat very well. Um, the Bevan Skiff is a very simple boat. This is the kind of boat we're going to go to in the future. That's Julie Lynn. I'm building that in my garage. That's the, the boat I started three years ago when I first came back from the wood, or four years ago, holy cow, when I first came back from the wooden boat school. It's a white hall. And we can get into that level of sophistication with these kids. They can do that. Rocking the boat builds those types of boats, Whitehall style boats with steam bent ribs. Um, this is completely copper riveted. That's what they do up there. There's 974 rivets in there. I don't know how many Barry helped me with, but it has to be at least 100. And he helped put some of the planks on. So I meant to put a photograph in you. In this slide presentation, you know, hitting your, hitting, remember when you hit your finger with that hammer? No, he, 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 did, he did not do that. Wrong nail. And what I'd like to do really quick is just conclude with a, uh, a quick video. Hopefully the uh, sound is going to work. And these are photos of the kids from this summer program, concluding with our launching ceremony. That's our workshop. <laughs> that boy was only 12 years old right there. Section 8 housing areas. 
and there are people in that area. There's a rec center right up the road, so we're looking at running a, a growing program out of there. So I'll probably sell a couple of them, uh, and then you know, as we build more, we'll sell some, we'll keep some. We're going to get into different styles of boats that we'll want to keep. So, yes, sir. First of all, I'd like to invite you to become a Rotarian. You certainly represent what we represent. I hope you'll give that some serious thought, sir. I will because Mr. Kimbrough over here has been on me for the past year. I actually came to one of your breakfasts, what, about a year ago? Yeah. And, and in the midst of trying to get this thing going, I, I just, time wise, I just couldn't do it. This is, this is about a 60 to 80 hour a week endeavor for me right now because I am the webmaster. The, the financial officer, I'm just about everything, and the boat building instructor, and, and so it's it's a lot of time. But I yes, I have thought about it. It's just point point two. My question is, I am responsible for the youth activities on in this club from my own district, and I'm very intrigued by what you're doing. We got high school kids who would like to come and whatever they can do, you know, to volunteer their time. I'm sure I, I can arrange that for you, particularly. Okay. You know, so you and I, you need to give me a card. With, with, with I, have, I have cards, I'll, you know. But, but part of the deal is you got to cover a tariff. Pressure, pressure, pressure. Any other questions? Yes, sir. What is the level of uh, difficulty to go from this level to a cedar strip canoe? Um, not, not too bad. Not, not much. You know, because it, it's the same, it's the same basic individual operations you do you know I mean, I mean these kids were using epoxy they were using now with the strip canoe if you're going to glass it over which you would do that's a that's that gets a one probably that's where the increase in, in complexity goes to but even that's not wouldn't be too difficult for these kids at all um, I, I don't think uh, are you aware that Old Dominion has a nationally recognized Rolling sailing program at the university. I do. And one of our members, unfortunately, is not here now, is Mrs. Cece Tucker. She's vice president of college and community relations. Uh, and Cece is well known in the office. And I think there would be worthwhile for you to touch base with her, what you're doing, an excellent thing. I think there's, there's some synergy there, I think, you know, yes. between the university and the community and what you do. I'm sorry, Cece is not here, but I think she would be great. If I can give you a card, maybe you can get that. Somebody can get that to her. Speaking of Old Dominion University, my, my colleague in this is, is an old curmudgeon named Joe Filipowski. We used to teach, oh, Jesus. <laughs> we used to teach at something called the Norfolk School of Boat Building that existed from about the late yeah. 70s to yeah. about the, uh, at the end of the 80s. And then it went out of business because they sold the pier that it was on, which is like right where the Wisconsin is, they sold it to a developer, and I think those condos next to the mm -hmm. Wisconsin yeah. was where it used to be. Yeah. They called it the Banana Pier or something, I don't know what. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, he was an instructor at that, and he's the one person I found around here that's all so interested in doing this. But his son-in-law is an associate professor for oceanography at ODU, so that's where our link in also for some, some instruction on the environmental science piece that we to get to. Last, and he wants to do that. So, one last question. Yeah. Right. Also, another connection at ODU is uh, a good friend of mine who's involved with, with Scotty, and he's a uh, tennis, but he's in charge of a lot of the Chesapeake Bay, uh, you know, water uh, quality checking and monitoring. And so that would be another yeah. possible. I'll give you. Can I give you a card, maybe? Sure. And I put. The little information sheet on your on your tables. If you want to take one with you, it talks a little bit about us. It has our website on there. Uh, there's more information about us that's on that website. Tom, would you join us over here? We've got a very important task that you. I know. <laughs> but before that, would you please accept this Thank you. cup as a symbol of the outstanding program? <laughs> that sounds like a recruiting recruiting <laughs> <It is. laughs> <That's my> <laughs> Thank now, you. Your, your last job is to pick that number. <laughs> any one of these three out of that hat. Yeah, but see, Barry's also told me it was my job to pick his number, so. I'm the president. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> See how what's, far that gets. What's your number? The last four digits is, are 0313. Three. I missed it. I got one. Yeah. I got one of them. I tried. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you well, ladies and gentlemen, have a good week. Be a gift to, run to the world. All right. All right. Rock and roll.